What's up, Blue Tube? It's the Blu ray Bandit. I went Blu ray hunting at three local pawn shops. Let's see what I got. First up, we've got a La Familia. I paid $9.57 for five titles, bringing the per title average to $1.91. Snowden, starring Joseph Gordon Levitt and Shailene Woodley, and directed by Oliver Stone. For those of you who don't know, I'm trying to collect all of the Oliver Stone movies on Blu-ray, at least the ones that are available. This is definitely one of them. Uh, this is based on uh, Edward Snowden, the famous American whistleblower. He released a bunch of government documents to the public domain and the press and has been on the run ever since. It's not entirely shocking that Oliver Stone would direct a movie about him. He's kind of a controversial figure. I personally am glad whistleblowers exist and support them as long as they whistleblow ethically, which might seem like an oxymoron. But in my opinion, Edward Snowden whistleblew about as ethically as possible. I've seen Snowden before. I don't remember much of it. I thought it was pretty unremarkable, but it is an Oliver Stone film and thus it must hit my shelves. Knowing, starring Nicolas Cage, supposedly a superbly crafted thriller, according to Roger Ebert. Also a legendarily bad movie, I would say. This is a sci-fi movie directed by Alex Proyas, who directed Dark City, which is a great sci-fi movie. This one, it's just, it's got its issues for sure. Uh, it's bad enough that I kind of want to add it to my collection. I definitely need to give it a rewatch. I've only seen it once. I'm going to check it out at least one more time and then decide whether I'm keeping it or flipping it. Here we've got Liz and the Bluebird. This is an anime film I know very little about. It comes Highly rated, Nick Creamer says, one of the most beautiful works of art I've experienced in years. Alrighty then, I'm uh, interested to check it out. I don't watch too much anime, but this one came recommended. The reviews online seemed solid, and at $1.91, it didn't seem like too much of a risk. It roughly sells for $4 on eBay, so if I don't like it, or I decide I'm never going to watch it, I can always flip it to help pay for a title from this haul that I'd rather keep. And the last title I snagged from this pawn shop is the Train to Busan, Train to Busan Presents Peninsula 2 movie collection. Now, Train to Busan, I already have on 4K, but I do not have a copy of Peninsula. And you guys know that I love my collections, and this is definitely one of those. Train to Busan is a great zombie action film, and Peninsula is an okay zombie action film. I was kind of disappointed in the sequel. Not that there's anything hugely wrong with it. It just Train to Busan set the bar so high that it was probably impossible to expect them to beat it on the first sequel. I'm hoping we get more movies from this world. Maybe stick to the train motif or maybe move it to like a cruise ship or a backhoe, maybe a bus or a trolley car. I think it would be cool if each film was a different mode of transportation headed into Busan. I'm still on the hunt for Peninsula on 4K. Once I locate that, I'll probably resell this two movie collection. But for now, it's hitting my shelf. Our next pawn shop was another La Familia. I spent $20 on 10 titles, giving it a per title average of $2 each. The 100 Foot Journey from producers Steven Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey. As you can imagine, with producers like that, this is probably a feel-good movie, and it is. It's actually a movie that I've seen. Is it a true masterpiece? Maybe not, but if you're just looking for an enjoyable afternoon movie to watch with the parents or grandparents, you're not going to go too wrong with The 100 Foot Journey starring Helen Mirren. Whoop with digital code. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a feel-good movie. It's about two restaurateurs that are kind of at odds. One person has all the resources, the other person just cooks well, and uh, there's lots of friendly infighting here and there. It's a feel-good movie. If you need one for the whole family, minus the kids, they'd be terribly bored. If you need one for the whole adult family, check out The 100 Foot Journey. And here's a kids movie classic that I love and watched a ridiculous amount of times when I was a kid. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang starring Dick Van Dyke and Sally Ann Moss. I loved this movie as a kid, but I got to admit, I probably haven't seen it in 20 years easy. I have 
no clue if it still holds up. I do know that this copy is sealed and brand new and runs for about $6 brand new on eBay. I haven't decided whether I'm going to keep it purely for nostalgic value or sell it to help pay for some of the titles in this haul I'd rather keep until I decide it's getting added to the collection. From a movie I've seen a bunch to a movie I've never seen, this is A Letter to Three Wives from the 20th Century Fox Studio Classics Collection. I guess maybe this is like their Warner Brothers archives or something like that. I'm pretty sure this movie is from the 50s or something. Uh, 1949, it looks like. So almost the 50s. It's the winner of two Academy Awards and nominated for Best Picture. I know very little about it. Let's look at the description. Three women whose boat trip is delayed when they receive a letter from a friend who claims to have run off with one of their husbands. Okay. All right. Fine. I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. I guess that's what the movie's about. To be honest, I have very little interest in this movie. Never heard of it. I might give it a watch before I sell it, but there's a very good chance I'm going to flip this. It regularly sells on eBay for roughly $7, and I'm going to use the proceeds from A Letter to Three Wives to pay for one of these other titles I'd rather keep. Another title I'm definitely selling to fund the keepers. This is Sigur Ross. Says Valtari Film Experiment. Now, I don't listen to Sigur Ross. I don't even know if that's a band or one guy. What I do know is this scanned at about $10 on eBay. So I picked it up with the exact intention of reselling it on eBay to a person who is actually a fan of his or hers or theirs in order to pay for some titles that I'd rather keep. This one's going on eBay. And here we have The Last Duel. Actually, we have two of them. Two copies of The Last Duel that I found at the exact same pawn shop. Now, individually, each of these will sell on eBay for roughly $6, but really, oh, with digital code. I wonder if this one has one. Yep. With two digital codes. Yeah, so individually, these will each sell for $6 on eBay, but I actually bought them to give them away to friends of mine. Two guys that I know love this movie. I already own it on Blu-ray. I'm on the search for the 4K. So this is an odd one in that it's not going on eBay. It's not going into the collection. It's going to some buddies of mine. Next up, we've got Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. What a title. Another anime that I have no context for whatsoever. I had never heard of it. This one is brand new and sealed. It fetches about $3 on eBay. I'm not even sure why I bought it because I try not to flip titles that are only going to earn like a dollar for me or so. I'll probably put it on eBay for six or seven dollars and just kind of let it ride and see what happens. Sometimes the other sellers who have it on the site will sell through their stock and you'll end up being the only one on there for a while at a certain price and then it'll go. I think that might be what I have to do with this. The Graduate, the classic comedy drama starring Anne Bancroft and Dustin Hoffman and Catherine Ross, a Mike Nichols film. I've actually never seen this, so it's a little bit of a blind buy for me. Certainly, I've heard of The Graduate. I've been told it's good. I just haven't checked it out yet. Now that I have it in my grubby little hands, I can't wait to check it out. Evidently, it was nominated for seven Academy Awards and won for best directing. Yeah, I definitely need to check this out. There's the disc. It's interesting that it has these international sensor markings. Is this an imported Blu-ray? It doesn't look like it from the outside. Weird. I wonder if it's region free. I really have no clue. But what I do know is that I'm going to give this at least one watch. And if I enjoy it, I'll add it to the shelf. And if not, I'll flip it on eBay. Run Lola Run. Truly a classic of independent foreign filmmaking from the 90s. This movie cooks. I love it. It's basically telling the same story over the course of three or four times in the film and then giving you options as far as how the story might have changed based on this decision or that decision. It's also got a killer 90s techno EDM soundtrack. I Love everything about this movie. I know there's a 4K out there somewhere. I think it's in a big set of Sony 4Ks that I just can't quite afford, but I would like to get my hands on that 4K. So I'm going to flip this one to help pay for some of the other titles in this haul I'd rather keep. And finally, for this pawn shop, I've got Sleuth. 
which is in a pretty gross case. I mean, this case is disgusting. I'm going to replace it. Uh, Sleuth stars Michael Caine and Jude Law. Supposedly, it's wickedly entertaining. You can tell by this case that uh, it was a very early Blu-ray. Yep, this one came out in 2009. I think the first Blu-ray rolled off the shelf in 2007. So this was one of the first. I really don't know anything about this other than it's directed by Kenneth Branagh who definitely directed the first Thor movie. He's an actor in his own right. There's the Blu-ray. No digital code. This was way before they provided them. Yeah, I don't know anything about Sleuth, and this actually isn't worth much on eBay, roughly $3, but it seemed like an oddity with a good cast. I'll give it one watch and then decide if I'm going to keep it. And at our last pawn shop, I got this. It's a 4K Blu-ray player that I paid $33.02 for, including tax. This is a UBK M9 4K Blu-ray player. It's in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of schmutz right here and right there and a little bit over there. But for the most part, there's only minor scratches. It's been very well taken care of, I would say. The bottom's got a little bit of an issue right up there in the top center, but I would say that's normal shelf wear and tear. If we look at the back, we can see it has Dolby Vision and Dolby Audio and also plays 3D Blu-rays. Now, the reason why I bought this player is one, you can never have too many 4K players. Two, it came with the remote. I rarely see 4K players in pawn shops that come with the remote. I also rarely see 4K players in pawn shops where the pawn shop thinks it's a DVD player, which is why I got it at such a good price. Beyond that, I don't know much about it. It has 3.8 stars on Amazon, where you can only buy it used for $249. That price is ridiculous because you can definitely find it on eBay for roughly $100. I've been using it the past couple days, and this thing is rock solid. Don't forget when you're out Blu-ray hunting to swing through the electronics aisle and make sure there's nothing pushed to the back of the shelf. You never know what you might find. And there we go, the full pawn shop haul. What you're looking at is 15 titles at a cost of $30.87. That brings the per title average down to $2.05 each with an estimated value of $69. I didn't include the 4K Blu-ray player in the title. That would have shot the estimated value to a level where it's not very helpful for you guys at home. Just know at minimum, I got a pretty decent 4K player for $31 and it's worth roughly a hundred on the aftermarket. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Doing any of those things really helps the channel out. The numbers are key to everything. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.